This is what inspiration does. When you are inspired, you're actually catching a feeling tone of something that's already latent within your own soul and that it, it activates it so you begin to feel it. Now what we want, always want to do, and I teach this a lot here at Agape over the years, what we always want to do is in, integrate that and stabilize that so that that becomes our, our new baseline for living so we're not coming to Agape to get high, we're coming to Agape to get free. So we're able to sustain the vibration and the frequency of inspiration that we capture, whether it's through our affirmations, our purpose statement, the selected reading, the songs, the message, whatever it is, so that you find yourself month after month, year after year, having a higher and higher baseline of joy and inspiration that's, that's independent of what's happening in the world of phenomena, in the world of effects and circumstances, because you can't really control all all of those things that are going on in the world, and but you can take responsibility for your own life. And so you've heard me say it's in, I have it in my 40 Day Mind Fast Soul Feast book, that you, that the old Zen statement, that you can't prevent the birds from flying around your head, but you can prevent them from making a nest in your hair. You can't prevent all the stuff that's happening in the world at times, but you can prevent all of that stuff from lodging in your awareness and becoming the activity of your awareness so that you're thinking from lack and limitation, fear and doubt and worry and not enoughness and fitfulness and anxiousness and anxiety. You can begin to think independent of that. So what I want you to do is just take a deep inhalation. Now release. Now your role as a spiritual adept, your role as a spiritual practitioner, one who practices, not just believes, is to find your way into spiritual practice so that you are more and more and more and more sustaining those moments of insight and revelation, sustaining those moments of inspiration so that you're living in that field and then something happens, you, begin, you will have an insight that you are the field itself, that you're not just living in the quantum field of ultimate reality, as the mystics would say, a unified field of cosmic awareness and the quantum physicists would, would talk about the unified field, but it's two languages describing the exact same things, you will realize one day that you are that field. That the moment in prayer or in meditation, when your attention shifts from the content of your consciousness to the context of your life, that context is I live and I move and I have my beingness in God. My life is the life of God. When it goes from content to content, Next, suddenly, at that particular moment, that is called Satori. At that moment, you're out of all of the content that's running you and, 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 and causing the, the filter, causing per perceptions and dust and grit on the filter and causing you to identify with that which is less than you, that which is temporal, that which is not you from, a, from an eternal point of view. And suddenly you have a Satori moment or incrementally you have a Satori moment. So we don't say that Satori or enlightenment or all of that is way far off. It's here in this breath right here. It's right, it's right now. Take, now again, in breathe, sustain, feel the sense of wonder and awe or inspiration, whatever ha has happened thus far. Sustain it. Take a little bit more air in. Release. Ah. So the body temple and the nervous system gets used to that particular thought form, that particular moment of inspiration be becoming home to you. So that guess what? When you do your spiritual work, when you're studying, when you're praying, when you're meditating, now your nervous system is on your side. It's not working against you. It's not carrying the thought forms of when you were fearful or startled or nervous when you held your breath. Now it's carrying the feeling tone of inspiration and wholeness when you held the breath around your more expanded awareness. Something wonderful is trying to happen in your life. You are learning this month to respond uh, from the timeless rather than reacting uh, to time. This is what it's all about. 
You've heard me say over the years, the meaning of responsibility is the learning to have the ability to respond from the eternal, to respond from love, to respond from peace, to respond from God, rather than react to circumstances. That the average individual that has not become conscious yet is enslaved by circumstances, situations, people, places, and things that appear to be outside of them, and they become enslaved to the endless cycle of their memory of the past coming into present moment with the interpretation of the past and causing a compulsive reaction to things going on in the world, things going on with other people, things going on with certain, cer- 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 certain situations or circumstances in their life, and they are enslaved to that cycle of reactivity. You are learning responsibility. I'm inviting you to take 100% responsibility for your own life. Now understand, when I say this, I am not saying blame. I'm not saying fault finding with yourself. I'm not talking about a heavy burden of responsibility where you have to do everything. No. 100% responsibility leads to conscious awakening and it leads to freedom. In other words, when you take 100% responsibility for your own life, what you have done, what you haven't done, what has been done to you, what hasn't been done to you, and you take 100% responsibility for all of that, you come to an awareness that one, you are not your body, you become aware that the body is accumulation of food that you've eaten, exercise you've done or not done, it's the accumulation of all of the things you've placed in the body temple, but it's not who you are. You begin to understand your mind is accumulation of the sensations that you have garnered through the five senses, the imprints that have happened on it since the time you've been on the planet, whether it's been a hereditary imprint, whether it's been a societal imprint, a religious imprint, a parental imprint. This, your mind has an accumulation of all that imprint and it runs its own racket and it creates perceptions and interpretation of experiences, thought forms that then you get to experience if you're not awake. And so when you take 100% responsibility for your own life, you become conscious and that you are you. You are not the mind, you're not the body, you are you. A timeless, eternal emanation of the only life that there is, the all that there is, and then you begin to understand freedom. You can't understand freedom permanently unless you take full responsibility for your own life. You can't do it because you'll live in excuses. You'll live in victimhood. You'll live in somebody else did it to you. Somebody else is controlling your life. Somebody else is making you feel a certain way. Somebody's controlling your mood. Somebody, some circumstance is, is, is making you feel and do what they want you to do. But when you take full responsibility for your own life, you run into being free to allow you to create how you will be moment by moment by moment. You get to create yourself in the moment how you will respond. Not the circumstance, not the situation, not the person, you see.